Joining us now is Target CFO Michael Fidelki. Michael, always great to get some time with you here, especially on earnings day. Lots of uh, I was, a couple of mixed messages, I would say, from earnings. Earnings be a little cautious in terms of the outlook. From your vantage point, how much stress is the consumer under right now? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Brian. And I'll maybe start by describing some of what we saw in the fourth quarter. And the most important headline from our perspective is that we grew in the fourth quarter and that growth came from traffic. And so that lets us know our guests continue to pick Target more and more often. Within that top line performance, we saw a consumer that was you know, feeling the impacts of inflation. Our strongest categories were categories like food and beverage, essentials and beauty. And we saw slower trends in the categories like apparel and home and hard lines. So for us, that includes electronics and toys and things like that. And so a consumer that's feeling the impacts of inflation, but importantly, they're finding incredible value at Target. They're responding to newness when we have it on the floor pad and that drove a traffic growth uh, for us in the quarter. Are they pulling back on how many items they're putting in a Target shopping basket? Well, interestingly, baskets about flat on the quarter, and there's a little bit of a decrease in items per basket offset by a slight increase in price per item. But the story for us is traffic. You know, we've got 23 quarters of comparable sales growth, and traffic has been a driver for us throughout the quarter, throughout this last year, over the last couple of years. And so that lets us know we're building engagement with guests. They're finding incredible value in the right assortment at Target. And we think that positions us well for the long term. Have they skewed uh, differently in terms of what they are buying from Target? Is, is that Target shopper now just coming in, filling up their basket with inflationary food and household essentials and maybe not buying that extra pair of jeans? Uh, it's an important question, Brian. And as we look at some of those trends that we've seen, those are trends really on the margin. Now, if I talk about our discretionary businesses, so apparel, home, and hard lines, we still did $55 billion of business in those categories. And so those categories aren't going to zero anytime soon. We're just seeing a consumer that's making choices as they've seen the persistent inflation in a category like food and beverage. And that's taking a bigger piece of their share of wallet and that's factoring into their purchase decisions. But it's our job to make sure within each category, we're getting it right. And one of the things we're pleased to see for the year, even with some of the changes by category is we drove unit share. So unit share growth in each of our five major categories. In terms of the guidance, let's unpack this a little bit. So cautious on the full year relative to consensus, and it looks like the first quarter might be a little bit of the culprit for that. How has the consumer responded to some of these early spring items we've seen at Target store? Yeah, we've we've been pleased with the response we've seen, especially to newness. Uh, we see a consumer that's leaning into some of those seasonal moments. We were pleased with results in Valentine's Day, but we're mindful of the trends that we saw emerge in the fourth quarter. And we think it's appropriate to plan cautiously in that environment. You know, there's some uncertainty as we look out and see what 2023 might hold. And we wanna make sure that we're planning prudently against that backdrop. An important piece of that is making sure we start the year with the right inventory position. And on that front, we feel really good. Inventory on the balance sheet was down about 3%, down about 13% in our discretionary categories. And so we're starting the year clean from an inventory perspective, and we think we've got the appropriate posture given the uncertainty. I've talked to a lot of different CEOs, Michael, and they, they continue to tell me within their outlooks, they are banking on a recession. Now, not a bad one, but a mild one. Are you doing the same at Target? Now, I'm, I'm no economist, Brian, and so I'm, we focus on the factors that we can control. We're mindful of the pressure that we see with the consumer that's making those trade-off choices by category, uh, and we think it's appropriate to be cautious in that environment. But you'll see us continue to do what Target does well, provide an incredible assortment. That means own brands you can find only at Target. That means national brand partnerships like Ulta that are unique to Target as well. That means providing an easy shopping experience. Uh, we've seen an incredible response that's persisted, you know, long past the pandemic now of some of our same day services, you know, to see the growth and drive up continue. Guests are falling in love with easy shopping at Target, and we think that'll serve us well in the long run. Is inflation starting to cool down? We've seen per inflation be persistent, so we're not expecting that to change anytime soon. We'll watch it closely, of course, but in an inflationary environment, the thing that we're laser focused on is making sure that our guests are finding incredible value in our store and online. And so our pricing strategy is consistent. Inflation uh, kind of environment set aside, we wanna make sure that our guests are finding incredible value at Target and evidence from the fourth quarter of that traffic go growth lets us know we're getting that right. You are also in New York City for your uh, uh, Investor Day, which you have uh, annually uh, as well. A couple of things that I wanna, I wanna touch on first, 
is this focus now more on, on value items, $3, $10, $15 items. That's a new message uh, I haven't heard from Target in, in a bit. Why, is, why are you uh, bringing that to market? Yeah, we know we're at our best when we keep things simple for the consumer. And so by highlighting those key price points and making sure that the products the guests find at those price points are incredible value, we think that will serve us well and continue to reinforce the, the great value that guests do find on our shelves and online. In, in an environment where uh, consumers are still dealing with high levels of inflation, Michael, do you feel as though you know, Target is, is getting a, a bad rap in terms of value perception that you have to come out here and now offer these, these greater number of opening price points. Well, the thing that we see is guests turning to Target more and more often. That traffic growth is a good sign to us that, that we're getting it right in aggregate. And we're mindful of the trends that are changing by category. It's important to highlight value with the price points examples that you just described. But it's also important that we keep the the target in newness on the floor pad and the things that you know surprise and delight our guests, that affordable joy you can only find at Target, that's a big part of who we are and that'll continue. My former analyst self, Michael, is when I saw that uh, in the release, I thought, well, how does that impact margins? I, when, that price investment is what the industry calls it. That investment in bringing lower prices to consumers, how does that shape your margins this year? Is it, is it going to hit it? Oh, we're always planning with the levers that we have, and one of those is price from time to time, and we're focused on being consistent in our pricing strategy. As you think about margins within that outlook for next year, well, we've got a wide range of outcomes. Even on the low end of that range, we expect to grow profits by over a billion dollars, and so 2023 will be an important step forward in our path to returning to the levels of profitability we expect over time. Uh, within the CapEx outlook, $4 billion to $5 billion. In 2022, that was at $5.5 billion. Now, year over year, that's a pretty large decline. Are there certain projects you're just not going to take on? It's an important question, Brian, because we found time and time again, the recipe for success for us is to make investments that drive growth. We did that last year. We've done that over the last several years. At 4 to $5 billion of CapEx investment, that still ranks in the, the top handful of years of CapEx investment in the company's history. And so we'll continue to invest in projects we're excited about. And that includes new stores. We expect to open around 20 new stores in neighborhoods that don't have a target today. And importantly, continuing to remodel stores. We know when we bring our latest and greatest thinking to your local target store via a remodel, guests respond to that. And so making sure that the chain's fresh and we're bringing our latest innovation to our guests through remodels is an important piece of that CapEx plan. Are you content with the, the capacity? I know Target the past five years has really ramped up distribution centers to get closer to the consumer. But with that CapEx pullback, are you still opening the same number of centers? Well, one of the things that's unique about our strategy is that so much of our fulfillment happens from our stores. And I just can't say enough about the job our teams have done to support over 30 billion in growth over the last few years. And that's come through our stores. Over 95% of everything that we sell, whether it's picked up in a local Target store by a guest coming through the aisles, or whether we're putting it in your trunk for a drive up order, or whether we're packing it in a box and shipping it out the backs. It's our stores that are really the powerhouse of that fulfillment. And we've seen exceptional scalability in our stores, and we'd expect that to continue. On the stores, we talked about three, four months ago, Michael, you really surprised me with the number in terms of inventory shrinkage. The cost of that was eye-popping. I've never heard that before. How much did that end up being in terms of shrink, in terms of lost sales opportunities last year? And then what are you doing to prevent that? Yeah, well, it was certainly a headwind this year. We know we're not alone in seeing elevated levels of shrink and um, organized retail crime driving some of that theft. And so the thing that we think about first about on that point, though, Brian, it, it's actually not the financial side. It's making sure that the safety and security of our team and our guests is first and foremost. And so we'll continue to be active at the federal and state and local level and, and helping shape a better outcome from a shrink perspective. But it was a headwind for this year, and we don't expect it to change soon. Is it, was it an under billion dollar impact? Yeah, we it's hundreds of millions of dollars of headwind for this year, Brian. Understood. So when I go into a Target store, I, I'm seeing more things locked up. And look, it's not just Target. It's your competitors too as well. Is that just the new reality retailers are facing? That's a, a merchandise presentation choice that we'll make in some stores when it's appropriate. But the thing that we're focused on mostly is making sure that our team and our guests are safe. And we'll continue to work that challenge over the year to come. All right. Well, good luck uh, on your investor day, earnings, you name it. Always great to get some time with you. Target CFO, Michael Fidelki. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.